Om Namo Narayanaya. Hello. Good morning from Portland, Maine. I'm recording this at 7.30ish in the morning. It's really amazing because when I first started to make these videos, I was like, well, I hope I can find some time in the morning. Otherwise, I'll do them on Saturdays when my girlfriend is at work. Here I am, months and months later, uh, numerous books and readings later, and it's fascinating how I get up, uh, I take a shower, I make my breakfast, and I always have time to make at least one video before I then finish up getting ready and go to work. And it just reminds me, you know, if, if you really want to do something, time will happen. You'll find the time. You'll make the time, and it won't be an inconvenience. And I hear this from folks all the time. Well, I don't, I don't know how to do it. I don't have any time, yada, yada. I even hear this from folks who don't work and just sit at home all day. And they're like, yeah, I don't have any time. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Watching TV? If you start to put something into your schedule that's important to you, you'll find the time. I'm also a writer, and people have always said, well, how do you have time to write so many books? I'm like... It just kind of happens. It's my passion. And yeah, I probably could be doing something else, but this is what I want to be doing. I don't know where that random thought came from this morning. <laughs> it's a Friday as I make this, and uh, yeah, I'm in a good mood because the weekend. <laughs> and had a good run last night. And yeah, I don't know. Just random thoughts for the day. <laughs> we are in Chapter 31, Lord Kapila Muni's instructions on the movements of the living entities. So we're starting up with verse 12. The human soul says, I take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, who appears in his various eternal forms and walks on the surface of the world. I take shelter of him only, because he can give me relief from all fear, and from him I have received this condition of life, which is just befitting my impious activities. I, the pure soul, appearing now bound by my activities, am lying in the womb of my mother by the arrangement of Maya. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him who is also here with me, but who is unaffected and changeless. He is unlimited, but he is perceived in the repentant heart. To him I offer my respectful obeisances. I am separated from the Lord because of my being in this material body, which is made of five elements, and therefore my qualities and senses are being misused, although I am essentially spiritual. Because the Lord is transcendent on a material nature and the living entities, because he is devoid of such material body, and because he is always glorious in his spiritual qualities, I offer my obeisances unto him. The living entity is put under the influence of material nature and continues a hard struggle for existence on the path of repeated birth and death. This conditional life is due to his forgetfulness of his relationship with the Lord. Therefore, without the Lord's mercy, how can he again engage in the transcendental living service of the Lord? No one other than the Lord, as the localized Paramatma, is the partial representation of the Lord is directing all inanimate and animate objects. He is present in the three phases of time, past, present, and future. Therefore, the conditioned soul is engaged in different activities by his direction. And in order to get free from the threefold miseries of this conditional life, we have to surrender unto him only. Fallen into a pool of blood, stool, and urine within the abdomen of his mother, his own body scorched by the mother's gastric fire, the embodied soul, anxious to get out, counts his months and prays as such. My lord, when shall I, a wretched soul, be released from this confinement? My dear lord, by your causeless mercy I am awakened to consciousness, although I am only ten months old. For this causeless mercy, of the Supreme Person of Godhead, the friend of all fallen souls, there is no way to express my gratitude but to pray with folded hands. The living entity in another type of body sees only by instinct. He knows only the agreeable and disagreeable sense perceptions of that particular body. But I have a body in which I can control my senses and can understand my destination. Therefore, I offer my respectful obeisances to the Lord by whom I have been blessed with this body and by whose grace I can see him within and without. 
Therefore, my lord, although I am living in a terrible condition right now, I do not wish to depart from my mother's body, to fall again into the blind well of materialistic life. Your external energy, called Deva Maya, at once captures the newly born child and immediately falls at defecation, which is the beginning of the cycle of continual birth and death begins again. Therefore, without being agitated anymore, I shall deliver myself from the darkness of Nessians with the help of my friend, Clear Consciousness. Simply by keeping the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu in my mind, I shall be saved from entering into the wombs of many mothers for repeated births and deaths. Lord Kapilamuni says, The living entity has these desires while even in the womb. But while he thus extols the Lord, the wind that helps parturition propels him forth from his face turned downward so that he may be born. Pushed downward all of a sudden by the wind, the child comes out with great trouble, head downward, breathless, and deprived of memory to the severe agony. The child thus falls on the ground, smeared with stool and blood, and plays just like a worm germinated from the stool. He loses his superior knowledge and cries under the spell of Maya. After coming out of the abdomen, the child is given to the care of persons who are unable to understand what he wants, and thus he is nursed by such persons. Unable to refuse whatever is given to him, he falls into undesirable circumstances. Laid down on a foul bed, and infested with sweat and germs, the poor child is incapable of scratching his body to get relief from his itching sensation, to say nothing of sitting up, standing, or even moving. In this helpless condition, gnats, mosquitoes, bugs, and other germs bite the body, whose skin is tender, just as smaller worms bite a big worm. The child, deprived of his wisdom, cries bitterly. In this way, the child passes through his childhood, suffering different kinds of distress, and attains boyhood or girlhood. In this state of life, he suffers pain over desires to get things he can never achieve, and thus due to ignorance, becomes angry and sorry. With the growth of the body, the entity, in order to vanquish his soul, increases his false prestige and anger, and thereby creates enmity towards similarly lusty people. By such ignorance, the living entity accepts the material body, which is made of five elements, as himself. With this misunderstanding, he accepts non-permanent things as his own and increases his ignorance in the darkest region. For the sake of the body, which is the source of constant trouble to him, and which follows him because he is bound by ties of ignorance and fruitive activities, he performs various actions which cause him to be subjected to repeated birth and death. If, therefore, the living entity again associates with the path of unrighteousness, influenced by sensually minded people engaged in the pursuit of sexual enjoyment and the gratification of the palate, he again goes to hell as before. He becomes devoid of truthfulness, cleanliness, mercy, gravity, spiritual intelligence, shyness, austerity, fame, forgiveness, control of the mind, control of the senses, fortune, and all such opportunities. One should not associate with a coarse fool who is bereft of the knowledge of self-realization and who is no more than a dancing dog in the hands of a woman. The infatuation and bondage which accrue to a man from attachment to any other object is not as complete as that is resulting from attachment to a woman or to the fellowship of men who are fond of women. At the sight of his own daughter, Brahma was bewildered by her charms and shamelessly ran up to her in the form of a stag when she took the form of a hind. Amongst all kinds of living entities begotten by Brahma, namely men, demigods, and animals, none but the sage Narayanite is immune to the attraction of Maya in the form of woman. Just try to understand the mighty strength of my Maya in the shape of a woman who by mere movement of her eyebrows can keep even the greatest conquerors of the world under her grip. One who aspires to reach the culmination of yoga and has realized his self by rendering service unto me should never associate with an attractive woman, for such women is declared in the scripture to be the gateway to hell for the advancing devotee. The woman created by the Lord is the representation of Maya, and one who associates with such Maya by accepting services must certainly know that this is the way of death, just like the blind, well covered with grass. A living entity who, as a result of attachment to a woman in his previous life, has been endowed with the form of a woman, foolishly looks upon Maya in the form of a man, her husband, as the bestower of wealth, progeny, house, and other material assets. A woman, therefore, should consider her husband, her house, and her children to be an arrangement of the external energy of the Lord for her death, just as the sweet thing singing of the hunter is death for the deer. 
Due to this particular type of body, the materialistic living entity wanders from one planet to another following fruitive activities. In this way, he involves himself in fruitive activities and enjoys the result incessantly. In this way, the living entity gets a suitable body with a material mind and senses according to his fruitive activities. When the reaction of his particular activity comes to an end, and that end is called death, and when a particular type of reaction begins, that beginning is called birth. When the eyes lose their power to see color or form due to morbid affliction of the optic nerve, the sense of sight becomes deadened. The living entity, who is the seer of both the eyes and the sight, loses his power of vision. In the same way, when the physical body, the place where perception of objects occurs, is rendered incapable of perceiving, that is known as death. When one begins to view the physical body as one's very self, that is called birth. Therefore, one should not view death with horror, nor have recourse to defining the body as soul, nor give away to exaggeration in enjoying the bodily necessities of life. Realizing the true nature of the living entity, one should move about the world free from attachment and steadfast in purpose. Endowed with right vision and strengthened by devotional service and a pessimistic attitude towards material identity, one should relegate his body to the illusory world through his reason. Thus one can be unconcerned with his material world. And thus ends this chapter. Oh, I did not like that. I'm sorry. Um, first of all, I spoke in my previous video that I... This talks about... the. The, the previous video talked about the first part of the chapter and the birth of the baby and I'm no scientist but I really don't think that this is accurate verse 17 it says uh, fallen into a pool of blood stool and urine within the abdomen of the mother so that's where the baby is in the abdomen with blood stool and urine yeah I don't think it's in the abdomen um, actually and blood stool and urine yeah, there's so much... Okay. I don't want to say those things aren't there. As I said in the other video, I don't have kids. I'm not a doctor. I never will have kids. But I do know, from what I can remember of science class in high school, there's more going on down there. There's sustenance. There's nutrients. It's not just this pit of everything horrible. I mean, the only thing missing here is phlegm. It's more than that. So there is something scientifically off here. While the whole thing was the baby is then born with a wind that is pushed down. I know it's muscles and baby. Well, I it, it 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 just doesn't. Yeah, I have issues with that. But it it and, and then the rest of this. So I, I where about the baby is living in ignorance. I think that's actually probably fairly true. We, we do live in ignorance. And it's kind of strange that we take care of these children who can't tell us what they want, yet look at what we become later on, folks who are incredibly verbal. But we still don't know what we want because we think we want material things. All right, the last part of this I just had major, major trouble with. The infatuation and bondage which accrue to a man from attachment to any other object is not as complete as that is resulting from attachment to a woman or to fellowship of men who are fond of women. So essentially, if you like the ladies, screw you. If you hang out with men who like the ladies, screw you. And if you are a lady, screw you, screw you, screw you. That's really what this is saying. Women are bad. Women are bad. It even says that um, God, where is it that the woman has all this husband and a house and a children, but it's just for her death. It's just setting her up. It's just, she's just living death. That's it. She's just walking through waiting, waiting. It's all, I, I can't even speak. Basically, the woman is Maya, the woman is illusion, the woman is bad, don't associate with women, don't associate with men who like women, I don't know if that means prostitutes or just liking women, and if you're a woman, well, yeah, well, tough shit, you know, maybe in the next life. I can't stand, I'm sorry, I, that, okay, the argument would be, so Mother Teresa was a bad person, you shouldn't associate with her. Joan of Arc, bad person, don't associate with her. <laughs> Ironically, that's what they said. But she was bad simply for being a woman. And Mother Teresa was simply, she was just a bad person. And you think about all these women 
in history, I've just spoken of two of them who we all know, you're literally going to say men who maybe are uh, brahmanas but are corrupt are better than them. That's where this goes. I'm sorry, I have real issues with that. I, I really can't see an argument that says women are bad. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this. I know a lot of people say this is the word of God. So we have to believe this as it is. And if God says women are bad, they're bad. Just treat them bad, you know. And if you're a woman, well, then just, you know, wait to die and hopefully your next life will be better. Or maybe if you are a woman, that means you were a man once, but you, you screwed it up. Just deal with it. Some people are going to say that. You may have that belief. I live in America, and we have the right to all have different beliefs. And I will defend your right to speak your mind. We have freedom of speech. I support that. And I will not put any restrictions on your speech, because I don't believe in restrictions. I don't believe having less speech is freedom of speech. And I don't believe in controlled speech. You have the right to believe that. You have the right to say, this is the word of God. I, on the other hand, am saying, I don't know about this. Maybe God changes his mind. Maybe God has changed his mind. Would God write this book exactly as it is today? Well, some say yes, but this is a translation we're reading. And if you look at the scriptures over time, to me, it feels like God does change his mind. Society does change. And at one point in time, maybe saying women was bad was what the culture needed, though it seems awkward to me and questionable. I don't know, it wasn't there. Uh, the Kama Sutra speaks of women in the same way, and it makes me very cringy. But if you disagree with me, please feel free to email me. Please feel free to reach out whatever I would love to talk with you and if you can convince me how this this is good and this is right I mean I, I'd love to hear your argument because because that's how we all grow and that's how we all learn I will not shut you down ban you or anything out like that if you disagree with me we're all in this together and we're all learning together and the catch-22 is none of us are gone so actually none of us really really know the actual answer but we can we can try to work on it together so <laughs> this video did not start in the way i thought it was and it hasn't ended that way either um but hopefully i covered some bases here to keep myself safe and you don't hate me too much and this isn't the first time I've pulled up issues with things I'm reading, though, and about women. Uh, anyways, that being said, I'm going to stop here before this goes on, and I really say some bad things. Feel free to reach out down below. Feel free to email. I will respond to everything, because if you take the time to write, I will take the time to respond. And I would actually love to hear from you, whatever it is, on this or any other video. Matter of fact, it's all welcome. Discourse is welcome. And anyways, I do thank you for your support and just hanging out with me and... Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna, 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 Harry, Harry, Harry Rama, Harry Rama, 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 Harry, Harry.